This is the second video about the fabrication of the front T section. In the last video, I showed you how I fabricated all the different panels for the front T section from a flat piece of sheet metal. In this video, we'll use all of those panels to completely assemble and weld together a complete front T section. So I won't keep you waiting and we'll get right to it. I hope you enjoy it. Now I've mapped everything out and I've made some jigs. These are some of the jigs for the front suspension pickup points. There's another cross brace like this, but this front pickup point um, isn't in the correct position. It's out by a couple of millimeters. When I reassemble everything by using this jig, I'm sure that all suspension pickup points are in the correct position and um, they have very close tolerances. So to make this bar I cut some slots in this bar on both sides and I slid these over two suspension pickup points that I know were in the correct position. Then I slid some washers over there and I welded the washers over the slots to know that they are in the correct position. This is the front D section marked up. These are two of the strengthening plates that have to go inside of this. Um, I'll quickly disassemble it and uh, I'll show you what all the parts are. So, this is the top piece. Um, I made it from one section with the folded edges just for rigidity. The front of the T-section is from in two different pieces and this is the welded in ring from the original one. This one has two folded edges, it's very rigid. These are both the side pieces that I folded up and welded up and then ground off. And this is the back piece. So what's the next step? Well, I'm going to clean off all the surface rust from all the panels. And while I'm doing that, I can do a little bit of thinking. What pieces I can seam weld, what pieces I have to plug weld, and what pieces I can spot weld. Also, I'd like to um, give you a little bit of advice. I wouldn't use all of the chassis plans that are on Jerry's website to build a series one front T section. Well, you can use them, but I wouldn't trust the dimensions that are on there because I used the plans, but I double checked all the measurements against my original front D section and some of the dimensions were quite a bit out. And the width was different and the height was different, so um, I just double checked all the measurements constantly and I used the chassis plans as a bit of a template and I just used my own dimensions. And that way I'm sure it all fits and that it's Combined with all of the original dimensions. I've tacked these side pieces to this rear panel. Now I'm going to try to spot weld these two pieces together. The way that I'm going to do it is by using my TIG welder. I'm going to turn this upside down in a minute and then start by making a puddle on the outside piece of metal. And then once the top metal melts and if both plates touch, the lower piece will melt as well. And if you form a big enough puddle, uh, both the metals will um, go together and then you'll have a spot weld. I'm also using an aluminium backing plate. The reason that I'm doing that is because it makes everything a lot easier. Because if you don't have the backing plate and all of the metal goes together and gets too hot, you'll just blow a hole through both of the steel plates. Now you can only do this if both plates are really close together and really touching. If they're not touching, you'll just blow a hole in the top plate 
Now I'm using these clamps and I'm hoping that these will um, give me enough clamping power to get all of the plates close enough together so I can spot weld. If I can't do that and if I notice that I'm going to blow a hole in the plate then I'll stop, I'll drill a hole in the top plate and do a plug weld. But if I don't have to plug weld and I can use this method um, everything will go a lot quicker because I don't have to drill all of the holes. I've done some welding tests and if the plates are really touching um, it goes very nicely and I've tested the strength of the welds and the plates broke before the welds broke so um, I'm very happy with the strength so so I've turned everything upside down and I've clamped it um, the aluminium plate is here so um, the place that I'm going to try to do spot welds is right in between these parts of the clamp I'm not using a gas lens on my uh, tick torch because um, if it blows up it will ruin my gas lens so I'm just using a, a number 6 nozzle. I'm not using any filter wire, so I'm just going to make a puddle here. For real, some support fakes, that's the grand debut. The bottom line, sit it put down, folks, and launch me far. As you can see, that's the part where it is penetrated. So that spot well has worked. So now I'm going to do, I'll try to do one here, but um, I'm going to do two side by side every inch or so. And that's the way it was originally done. So um, if this works all the way down, it will save me quite a bit of time by not having to drill all of the holes to plug weld. These are 19 spot welds and uh, everything worked like planned so um, I didn't have to drill any holes and I'm quite sure that will be very sturdy. Um, I counted on the original panel and the original one had 18 spot welds so um, there are 19 spot welds. I'm happy with that and now I'll do the other side and then um, we'll continue adding panels until we have a complete front T section. I finished spot welding both the side pieces on uh, this front part. The next panel that we're adding is the top section. This uh, is a flat section with the two winglets and two folded edges, one here and one here. And uh, now I'm going to tag this top piece to this uh, rear plate and I'll tag it every couple of inches and afterwards I'll spot weld these winglets to the side pieces. Um, I've clamped this because this is a very straight piece with this folded edge and this panel had warped a little bit um, with welding in this hole. So uh, when I clamp it, this will become very straight again. This will be a lap weld and I'll completely seam weld this, but I'm going to wait with that because uh, if I'll completely weld it now, quite a lot of heat will get in this and it might warp a little bit, but uh, if I add some more panels, then this will be a very stiff structure and uh, it won't warp, so uh, now I'll just stack it and afterwards I'll uh, seam weld this and, uh, on this lap weld and then I'll clean it off so uh, this looks one piece. These two parts are what makes up the front of the T-section. First I want to weld in the bottom section first and the top section after it on, on the complete assembly, but then it would be very difficult to weld these flanges together, so um, I mocked everything up and I clamped it down. Now I'm going to weld these flanges together once I've welded these flanges together, I'll put everything on the assembly and then I can seam weld the front of this. But um, this is the best way, I think, to get these pieces together because afterwards I'll have to weld in these strengthening plates. They go on like this. So um, I can weld these two together, fit them on the rest of the assembly test fit the strengthening plates and then weld everything in one go. So um, I'll just spot weld these together and I'll show you once I'm going to test fit everything on the rest of the front teeth section. So I drilled all of these holes just to be able to plug weld the strengthening plates. The strengthening plates have been seam welded to the front bulkhead. This is the rear bulkhead towards the driver. So um, I'll start by welding in the front bulkhead by using spot welds like I did on this side and uh, 
once the front bulkhead's in place, I'll turn it over and then I'll fill in these plug wells and uh, I'll show you what it looks like when I finished it. So I've welded in the front part of the front T-section. Um, I spot welded on the sides, so here and here, and I tacked in the top seam. I also plug welded the holes for the strengthening plates that go on the inside. The thing that I'm going to do next, now everything's nice and rigid, is to weld a complete seam along the top, both on the front and the rear, and also weld a complete seam along the two front sections. Once that's done, I can clean all the wells off a little bit, that everything's nice and smooth, and um, then we can go on to the next step. I'm almost finished with all of the welding on the front T-section. The only thing that still needs to be welded in are the suspension pickup points and the bottom plate, but these are one of the last things that I'm going to do. So now I've welded the front sections together with this welding seam and I've welded the front and the rear sections to the top with these seams and um, my welding has improved quite drastically in the last year so um, the weld looks really nice so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure and drill out all the holes for the master cylinders, the steering rack mounts and suspension pickup points but I'm going to measure this a couple of times and I'm only going to drill the holes once I'm 100% sure that they are in the correct location because um, the location of these holes is really really critical. So I've finished drilling um, the first part of all of the holes in the front T-section. I also uh, had to grind this down a little bit so it's nice and smooth. So as you can see I've drilled two holes here and two holes here to hold in uh, the steering rack clamps. Secondly I had to enlarge this hole a little bit. Um, firstly because my hole was a little bit to the left of where it should be. Secondly, because I've switched to a forged U-joint instead of uh, the one with the rubber coupling to connect the steering rack with the steering column and uh, it was hitting a little bit so I've enlarged this a little bit. You can also see that um, instead of one hole for a master cylinder there are two now because I'm switching to dual master cylinders and uh, I had to tilt them a little bit so that the mounting holes of the master cylinders wouldn't come in contact with um, the clamp for the steering rack. These two holes that you can see here are new as well. Um, these are holes for the tubing to the front mounted oil cooler. When I turn this around you can see that um, these holes were already here. This is for the steering column, for the cooling tubes, for the wiring harness. These two are new. These are for the master cylinder push rods. And these two are for the tubing to the front mounted oil cooler. This is the part where the rest of the chassis will attach to. You can also see that both on the rear and on the front that I have drilled some pilot holes on the locations for the suspension pickup points. I used a lot of measurements both from the plans and from my original front T section to measure these out and um, I was relying more on my original T-section because I know that the plans aren't correct. So um, I measured these out. Once I had the two top holes, um, I measured the bottom ones out and I used these jigs that I made. You might remember these from earlier in the video. So um, I attached these to the chassis and that's the way that I determined the location of the suspension pickup points on the bottom and um, on both sides. So now I've drilled these pilot holes. So now I'm going to drill some bigger holes using this hole saw. This is the correct size for these tubing. This has a half inch internal diameter for the suspension pickup points. So um, if I drill it with this hole saw, I'll have a little bit of play, and um, that play will be perfectly alright because that play will allow me to use my jigs once again to make sure that everything is uh, in the correct location on both sides so that um, the tubes are perpendicular to the chassis. Now it's time to weld in the front suspension pickup points. I already drilled the holes and they align perfectly on the front and the rear section. 
These are the tubes that hold the pivot pins. As you can see, they have a half inch internal diameter and I couldn't find these tubes anywhere. So um, Richard at Banks provided me with these. The bottom ones came uh, cut to size, but he also supplied a length of tube that I had to cut to size for the top ones. The top um, is two small parts, but uh, I'll show you this in a minute. So now I'm going to assemble all of the different parts and I'm going to show you how I'm going to align everything to make sure that the suspension geometry is completely correct. Now all the suspension pins are in, now I can align these tubes so that they have the correct stick out. And I measured this off of my original front T section so I know it's correct. To secure this I'm going to use a little magnet on the rear. So now I've set the dimensions once but these are dimensions that I will be constantly double checking to make sure that nothing has moved. Now I'm going to put on the jig that I made at the beginning of the video off of my original front T section. So now because of this jig, the relation between all of the suspension pickup points is completely fixed and in the correct position. So now I'm going to double check all the stick out on all the tubes and then I'm going to tag this on on one side and then I'll do the exact same process on the other side of the chassis to make sure that they are aligned in both directions. Now the ones on the front have been tagged on with only one tag. So um, there's a little bit of movement in them, so I can align the rear ones with the jig before I tack this in place as well. Once everything's secure, then I'll completely weld all the suspension pickup points. But first, we need to align the rear tubes. Now, normally these sit almost flush with the rear of the chassis and are welded around it, because this is just a blind ending. It'll be like this with a nut on the end because this is a part of the chassis that's inside of the cabin that's in the footwell of the passenger and um, it doesn't serve a real purpose for aligning suspension because there's no push on this end but I've made these tubes a little bit longer because it's easier to weld than welding close to an edge so I have to align it from the inside to make sure that the spacing between the two tubes is correct. I've set my caliper to the correct dimensions. So now as everything's aligned you can see that there's a little bit more of a stick out on the rear and this will make it a lot easier to weld. Then we just have that much more stick out inside of the cabin but it's inside of the footwell behind the carpet so it doesn't really matter. So now we'll put the jig back on. So now the jig's back on again. I'm going to double check the measurements and then I'll tack it in place. All the tubes for the pivot pin 7 welded in and uh, the pins line up quite nicely and more importantly the jig still fits. So now it's time to weld this front T section to the rest of the backbone chassis. So I finished building a complete front T section but to recap I'll show you the one that we started with. So this is the T-section that was welded to the chassis and you can see um, it's in pretty bad state a lot of rust and quite a bit of holes on the top and uh, metal has just completely vanished here um, this is a recessed hole that I cut out but uh, all the suspension pickup tubes were bent and the worst part is this the complete bottom is gone 
The following couple of centimeters is completely gone, so when I was trying to repair this, it occurred to me that um, it's much easier just to scrap this and to build a completely new one. So that's exactly what I did. So this is the new one. Um, it's pretty much exactly as original, except uh, for some extra holes for muscle cylinders, all the cooler tubes. The only thing that's left is to weld in a bottom. As you can see, but this is the thing that I'm going to do once it's been welded to the backbone chassis. Well, this is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we'll attach the front T section to the rest of the backbone and then we'll weld in the bottom strengthening plate so we have a complete chassis once again. But I'll show you all that next time. If you want to find out more about my restoration project, please visit my website where there are a lot of pictures and some more explanation about everything that I do. And you can also subscribe to this channel so you won't miss any of my videos. And uh, I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye.